Hello ladies and gentlemen, Keaton here and welcome to Nuclear Throne update number 64. For those of you who do not know, this is the one time a week where we here at Tengu Drop take a look at the latest Nuclear Throne update, grab that change log, put it into video format for your viewing pleasure, and show you as much as possible. With that said, before we head into update number 64, let's quickly recap what happened in update number 63. Update number 63 introduced the first version of the loadout screen to the game, bringing with it the opportunity for players to enable a crown of their choosing from the very start. The update also introduced a new mutation called Open Mind, giving players an extra chest or rat canister per level. New tiles were added, character silhouettes were updated, and a slew of fixes and changes were made. And that was it for update number 63, so let's check out update number 64. Move aside grenades, plasma, and screwdrivers, because update number 64 has brought a new sheriff to town. Boat fans rejoice as Vlambeer have added a brand new extremely powerful boat weapon to the game, the Heavy Auto Crossbow. Yes, the Heavy Auto Crossbow. A crossbow that shoots giant rocket sized arrows in rapid repetition. It's okay, we'll give everyone a moment to let that sink in. Taking two boat ammo per shot, the heavy auto crossbow exhibits a similar fire rate to the auto crossbow, but fires giant boats that heavy crossbows fire. It's as awesome as it sounds. And just in time, a powerful crossbow is probably what players will need in order to survive a long journey through the wastes. Any player skilled enough or lucky enough to loop the game and reach the third desert level, will be greeted by not one big bandit, but two big bandits. Indeed, this is not an effect, a bug, or a typo in the changelog. This is in fact an early test of the upgraded loop boss for the desert. What does this mean from a lore perspective? Clone? Parallel universes colliding? Big bandit's hot sister? We can only speculate. A new extra powerful weapon and new potential lore surrounding Big Bandit is all the new content this update could handle. So let's check out the fixes and changes for the week. A considerably game altering change is made to shells this week, adding a temporary damage boost to shells when they're first fired. In other words, enemies closer to players getting shot by the shells will take more damage than those off in the distance. This seems to be indicated visually by the shape of the shell. Round at first, then oblong later. It should also be noted that the shotgun shoulders mutation can reactivate this damage boost momentarily. Fish no angles in the direction he is facing when using his throne butt, and Vlambeer note that eventually this will be animated. As a side note, we've decided to feature this change so prominently because as of this recording, Fish's throne butt is currently bugged, allowing for an infinite row that lasts the length of the level. This has actually led to a fun auto-moving shooter minigame that we highly recommend players try before it's eventually patched. Weapon changes this week include tweaks to burst weapons, cluster launchers spawn earlier, and the flat cannon does more damage. Other changes include more health for proto statues, tweaks to horrors A ultra mutation and throne butt, and now the sharp teeth mutation does more damage over a staggered amount of time to everything. Except props. There were several small visual changes, Big Dog shakes the screen while walking, and the freeze time when hitting multiple small enemies has been decreased. Finally, fixes this week include removing the one-shot potential for plant saplings, weapons now go through portals, many wall-related issues were resolved, and Big Dog now always wakes up. In fact, it's being reported that Big Dog is now always awake from the very beginning. Clearly, Vlambeer have given the poor monstrosity too much caffeine. And that's about it for fixes and changes. As always, if you would like to read the full change log for yourself, a link can be found in the description below. Now let's check out what the community has been up to. Last week, Steam user Solid issued the Drops Challenge, and it was Stir who would be the brightest star of them all, taking home the win with an eyes run that impressed even Solid. This week, Solid has issued the Mind of Metal Challenge, asking players to go the distance with Robot, not picking up any melee weapons, and purposely avoiding anything that could benefit the player for more ammo. For all the details on this RNG nightmare waiting to happen, be sure to check out the link in the description below listed under Community Linked Up. Then head over to the Nuclear Throne Wiki to realize, confirm, and then reconfirm just how much of a nightmare this challenge is likely to be. 
And that's about it for update number 64, the new heavy autocross was pretty awesome to play with, although it eats through ammo as quick as just about any other euphoric OP weapon in the game. The change to the shells seems to be logical, as shotguns in general are often meant to be utilized up close. The bugs introduced this week actually made the game fun in some weird way, possibly due to the simple shakeup of a pretty static formula. Secretly, I'm hoping the auto-moving shooter minigame somehow stays in. And with Vlambeer at GDC, it's possible players will be able to milk a little more time with these quirky little bugs, as they have no plans to release an update this week or next week, however, however that works. Anyway, if you haven't already purchased Nuclear Throne and you would like to learn more about it, be sure to check out NuclearThrone.com. You can also subscribe to Vlambeer's Twitch channel, where they livestream the development of this game every Tuesday and Thursday. Subscribing gives you access to Nuclear Throne emoticons used on Twitch.tv, as well as a Steam copy of the game. And we here at Tango Drop do our best to cover the latest Nuclear Throne update every weekend or whenever it's released. And we also do a Nuclear Throne playthrough called the One Shot every Thursday. So be sure to check back often, or just subscribe to the channel. As always, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the latest additions and changes made to the game. How do you feel about the new heavy auto crossbow? What do you think of all the silly bugs introduced this week? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, hope it was informative, and I'll see you guys next week or whenever the next update is actually released. Bye!